Hi guys, uh, let's discuss one of the very important operating system concepts called as semaphore today. Let me make it clear that the objective of this video is to understand semaphore on a very broad level from the user perspective. So before going to the details of the semaphore, <clears throat> let's start with the word itself, semaphore. It is taken from a French word called a semaphore, which is basically used for traffic signals. So the concept of this semaphore is actually taken from the traffic signals. So let's basically understand why we need semaphore from the concept of traffic signal. Why we need traffic signal at first place? So we'll take a very basic example. There are two roads which cross each other. So there's a cross section of two roads. So that becomes the critical source or the critical place where the vehicles from both the roads want to come. And you can't allow vehicles from both the roads to be on that critical section at the same time because then it leads to accident. So there is a concept called as traffic signal which handles this intersection of road in an intelligent way such that <clears throat> only vehicles from one road are at that intersection point and the vehicles on the other road will be waiting during that time. So it is implemented using a concept called as red light and green light. So there will be a green light on only one of those two roads. So if there is green light on one road, there will be a red light on the other road. So you will never have green lights on both the roads. The green lights on both the roads are mutually exclusive. You should never have that. So that is the basic concept of traffic signal, which handles this critical resource of where the two roads meet by using the concept of traffic signal and for which it uses the notation of red signal and green signal, which the cars or the persons who are driving the car know and they follow that protocol. <clears throat> so since we have borrowed the name of the traffic signal, we should have also borrowed its concept, right? So there should be some something similar in our computer system. That's why we have borrowed that name. So let's understand how it works. So let's again take a very simple example. Let's take an example of printer. There are two people who are connected to the same printer. Two people in the sense, two computers which are connected to the same printer. And the printer gets print command from both of the computers. So if it executes both of the commands at the same time, it's again an equivalent of accident on the intersection, right? Because you get some, some output which is of no use for both of the users. So it has to execute one after the other. So we have to choose one out of the two computers. So let's call uh, these computers as processors because that makes more sense when you're talking in terms of computers in a computer science world. <clears throat> so there should be something which chooses one of these two processes and allots printer to that process so that that process can execute its printing action and get its printer. And during that time, the other process should be waiting. And once the pr process which has got the printer is done with its printing, it releases the printer then the waiting process gets the printer to complete its work. So if you compare with our earlier traffic light example, printer is like the intersection of roads. Our tasks or the processes or the computers are like the vehicles on the road. And the operating system which is handling this allotment of printer is like the traffic signal, which um, handles the allotment of printer to different processes at different point of time. And a semaphore is a protocol which is similar to the red and green lights in the traffic signal. So let's understand how it works with a little bit of technical details. As I said, so I, when I was explaining this printer action, I said there should be something which allots printer to one process. That something is operating system which manages all the resources and printer is one of the resources for it. So how it allots? So how the allotment is done is both the printers ask both the tasks, uh, I'm sorry, both the tasks ask for the printer access uh, through the um, uh, semaphore call that they want the access to the printer and operating system then decides which process has to be given the access. It depends on so many other parameters like priorities. We'll not go into that details right now, but let's assume that there is something 
some algorithm by which operating system decides one of the processes will get access to the printer. So that process gets access to the printer. So it is like that process gets the green light from the operating system and the other process is denied of the access of the printer. So that means that that gets a red light from the operating system. So when we come back to our uh, traffic signal example, so when a vehicle gets green light, it just moves on like our process just moves on with the printer and starts printing. But well, on the other hand, the cars on the other road which got red light will be waiting till they get the green light. In a similar way, our task which was denied the access of printer will be waiting. But what that process does when it is being, when it is waiting? So if it has nothing to do, it has to just wait till it gets the printer. Like if, so it, it is similar to what you'll do when you get a, a red light on the traffic signal. You either wait, you just keep waiting till you get the green light and get frustrated. Otherwise, you can do some other things. Like you can listen to a music, you can listen to some music, you can chat with the person who is sitting beside you. So you're doing something else. You are doing something which is apart from your primary objective, which is driving on the road. So similar thing can be done at the process level. The process can give the primary objective for some time till it gets the printer and move on with some other things. So the vehicles wait at the intersection in a traffic signal. Similarly, operating system, semaphore concept, the process gets blocked till it gets access to the printer. If it has nothing to do, it gets blocked and it, get, it gets moved to the blocked queue. So where all the blocked processes for different um, resource accesses are kept. So once the process which has got access to the printer is done with its task, it releases the printer and then then uh, it releases the printer and then the process which was blocked is moved from block queue to the ready queue. Then the scheduler can choose this process or some other process for to be executed on the CPU and uh, let it use the printer for its printing purpose. So in this way, the operating system handles the critical resource, which is printer, to be shared by different resources. So that there is no resource clashing. Similar way, the traffic signal handles the intersection of two routes so that vehicles from two different routes don't come on the intersection at the same time to avoid accident. So in the same way, we avoid resource collision or, or we avoid uh, inefficient usage of the resources in operating system domain. So in the next video, we'll go into the details, technical details of how we'll actually implement these things, how the code for the semaphore looks like. So I guess it is pretty clear from now on uh, at a broader level that what semaphore is and how, how it is related to our daily life or on a visual or the top level, how semaphore works and looks like. Thank you.